This is Lindsay's Science School, brought to you by Craig Swap and Associates. Hi everybody, I am Miss Lindsay and this is my science school. Today we're talking about different types of precipitation. Now you've probably heard of rain and snow, but today we're going to talk about a few that maybe you haven't heard about quite as much. If you've got any questions that you want to ask me, you can go ahead and throw them in the comments section of our Facebook Live on the KUTV Facebook page, and we will answer as many of those questions as we can get to at the end. So as I'm teaching you, think about, hmm, what are some questions I can ask her about this subject or any weather subject or science subject in general. So let's talk about the different types of precipitation. Now, when we talk about different types of precipitation, you need to keep in mind that the type of precipitation that you see on the ground is totally dependent on the air mass above you. So at your house, you've got a column of air above you. If that column of air is very cold air, meaning below 32 degrees, you know that you are most likely going to get snow. That's the type of precipitation that you'll get. If that column of air is warm above you, you're going to get rain. If it's warm all the way throughout, you're gonna get rain. But the problem comes in when you have a little bit of both, when that warm air is on top of cold air. Warm air, we talked about this, warm air is less dense, those molecules spread out. And so when warm air and cold air collide, the warm air tends to go over the top of the cold air. See how this warm air is over the top of the cold air. So when you have a situation like this, you can get two types of precipitation. Let's say that up high you've got warm air in place. That means that the precipitation is going to start falling out of the clouds as rain, but then it falls down into this cold layer. And if this cold layer is thick enough, it has a chance to refreeze, at least partially. And that's when we get what's called sleet or snow pellets. That's rain that has then frozen as it's fallen into the cold layer. Where you run into a big problem is when you have a lot of warm air and a little tiny shallow layer of cold air right at the surface. That means that the precipitation falls as rain throughout this layer. I gotta go this way, this layer, but then it's just got a tiny shallow layer of freezing air below it, right when you get to the surface. And in this case, you get what's called freezing rain. So I wanted to explain freezing rain for just a minute. So you've got this warm air mass through most of the air above you, but right at the surface is that cold air. So as the precipitation starts to fall, it falls as rain. Then it falls down into this cold layer. And what happens once it hits the road? It instantly freezes to the road because that road is below freezing. So when water hits that very cold surface, it instantly freezes. Now this is a big problem for when you're driving on the roads or when you're walking to school. It can make the sidewalks and the roadways extremely slippery. We're lucky here in Utah that we don't get freezing rain a whole lot, but many places do get freezing rain and we can get freezing rain here. So it's a very dangerous situation because it basically makes everything like an ice rink. Would you like to try to make some freezing rain today? We are going to make our own freezing rain. Let's head on over to the science desk. I've got Miss Jade helping me today and we're gonna make some freezing rain. Now to do this first experiment that we're going to do, you need just a few things and I'm sure you've got all of these things around your house. You need a big bowl, that's our blue bowl that we have and I filled that blue bowl with ice. Now I started this project about an hour ago. And the reason I had to do that is because there's a cup of water in the middle of that. And we needed that cup of water to get extremely cold. It's called super cooled water. Now, have you ever heard of that? What do you think super cooled water is? Well, for a minute, I thought you said super cool water. Oh, and I said, well, I have some super cool yeah, water super here. Super cool water, <laughs> super cooled water is actually super cool. It's water that's below freezing. Now freezing is 32 degrees, Miss Jade, right? Yes. But we can actually get water to go below freezing and stay liquid. Did you know that? I learned something new 
every, every week day, with Miss Lindsay. Every day. <laughs> okay, so the way that we uh, got this to happen is I took that layer of ice that's in there and I put some salt on top of it. Just so regular did, salt? Just regular salt, just like this. So what I did is I, I put a layer of salt on the top. You've heard about um, when we get winter storms, UDOT will send their trucks out and they put salt down on the roads. Do you know why they put salt down on the roads? Have you ever thought about that? Why do they put salt down on the roads? Well, it's like salt you would put on your, on your driveway or your sidewalk, right? And um, it, yeah, it, what happens? It you melts the ice. It right? melts the ice. Even when temperatures are below freezing, you can melt ice and snow when you put salt on it. The salt actually lowers the melting point of water it's down to about 25 degrees. So that ice in there. So is, you put is this down, all around. I put it all around. So that ice in there is down to about 25 degrees and it's melting like crazy at 25 degrees. Yep, and it's, it's cold. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's getting that water, that cup of water in there really, really cold. Now I've got a thermometer right here. Now you go, well, of course, ice turns water cold. I've got a different glass of water here to show you the difference in temperature. So I've got a little thermometer here. I'm gonna stick it in this one and we're gonna watch. I don't know if you can see that number right there. Can you see that pretty good? Is it okay. 42? Yep, so it's going degrees. down 41.5 degrees. So that cup of water is 41.5 degrees, even with the ice in it, it's above freezing. That ice is melting. But where I've used the salt on top of the ice here, let's see what the temperature of this one is. Let's see, can you see it right there? Oh yeah. See how it's dropping? It is now down to 29.4 degrees. So it's below freezing, but it's, it's still, still liquid. liquid water. That's called super cooled water. And this is what happens when you get freezing rain because it falls through that warm layer as rain, then it drops into the shallow cold layer and it starts to cool down, but it doesn't have enough time to totally freeze over. So I think that I want this to get just a tiny bit colder. So I think we should do this experiment first. Okay. We're gonna let that get a little bit colder. Yeah. So let's just Can we slide move it over it. a little yeah, bit. Let's just slide it over. You wanna help us out, lab assistant Kevin? Absolutely. Okay, we'll slide it over. And our bowl's been leaking a little bit, so that's why you see that. But that's fine. That's totally that's fine. Totally fine. You're totally fine. Totally fine. So with our next one, this one doesn't actually have anything to do with freezing rain. This one has to do with normal rain because when we get a lot of rain, Thanks. you <laughs> You want to know how much rain you got. Man, it rained all day at my house. Yeah, it looks like it have, rained all day right here on the desk. Uh, it did. <laughs> it did. It's been raining for an hour on the desk. So you want to know how much rain you've got. So we're going to make a rain gauge. A rain gauge is what we use to measure how much precipitation we've picked up, how much water we've picked up. So we can do this at home with a two liter bottle. And this is one that parents will need to help with because look, I got some sharp things. I've got a sharp knife and I've got some scissors. So parents will have to do part of this. I've also got some water. I've got some, you're supposed to use masking tape, but this is painter's tape. It's what I had at home. Just use what you have at home. So we're gonna use painter's tape and we're gonna use a ruler. And lab assistant Kevin, over on my other desk, I think I've got a marker. We need a marker as well um, to mark up our tape. So the first thing that we are going to do, Miss Jade, is we are going to cut off the top okay. of that two liter bottle. So what I need you to do is, the way I found that this was easiest is I left the cap on the bottle. That gives us some good pressure inside so that when you stick it with the knife, you can make a hole. We wanna make a hole about where we wanna cut the top so off. So like about here? Yeah, yeah, that'd be fantastic. Right oh, okay. there's our marker. Thank, Thank you. you so much, lab assistant Kevin. Yep, just like that. I'm so glad you couldn't see my face when I was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> now you're gonna cut in a straight line around. So we're just cutting the top of the bottle off. So we just use the sharp knife to poke a hole in it. If your scissors are sharp enough to poke a hole with your scissors, go for it. Mine just weren't. So that's why I use the sharp knife. And this bottle has seen better days. We've used this bottle for a couple of experiments. So try, <laughs> try your best to kind of make it circular again. Hopefully okay. your bottle is in better shape than our bottle is. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're gonna take the tape 
and we want to pull off a, a piece of tape, try to make it about six inches long. It's gonna go on the outside of our bottle. Good. Now what we wanna do is we wanna use our ruler. So stick the piece, Kevin, are we okay to stick this piece of tape on the science desk? Okay, so just stick the piece of tape on the science desk. Okay. Yep, just like that. And now I want you to use the ruler and I want you to measure off, make a mark for zero inches, one inch, two inch, three inch, as high as you can go on uh, your piece of tape there. And we're gonna, after you make the little marks on it, I want you to write next to one of them zero inches. So let's make that the bottom if you're gonna make that one the zero. Okay. Uh -huh. So you're gonna have to write upside down. Yes, I am. <laughs> Or turn it's it science around. In itself. Turn the tape. Okay, so one inch. The next one would be two inches. Yeah, turn your yes. piece of tape around. Come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> now I can't even get it off oh, the table. Oh shoot! I will. I will. You know what? This side's sticking up better. There you there go. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Okay. One. Yep. Two. Two. Three. three. Four. Five, six, seven. Okay, so she's actually got seven. Do you want to hold that up and show sure everybody will. what that looks like? Okay, so hopefully you can see her little markings on there. It goes from zero at the bottom all the way to seven at the top. Okay, so just set that down on the desk once again. Yep, just like that. Okay. Now, this is what we're going to use to measure how much moisture, how much water we've gotten from a, a particular thunderstorm. But look at the bottom of our two liter bottle. Is it flat? It is not. It's not flat. And would you say that that thing would be easily blown around in the wind or would it be hard to blow around in the wind? Easy to blow around in the Easy wind. Easy to blow around in the wind. So we want to put some water at the bottom or you can put rocks at the bottom. But if you put rocks at the bottom, you also need to put some water at the bottom. And I'm going to explain why in just a second. So just put a little bit of water in there. Um, just till it's, I'll tell you when to stop. Yeah, let's go right there. Okay. Okay. So now my question is, I've got water in the bottom of my rain gauge. How am I going to tell what's new water and what's old water? I'm going to tell because I'm going to put the zero end of my tape right at the water line. So that'll tell me everything from this point down is water that I put in. Okay. And everything above it is new rain that we've received. Now you might say, well, can I just use rocks and not water? The problem with using just rocks and not water is that there's little tiny gaps in between those rocks and the water will go down mm -hmm. and so you won't get an accurate measurement. So you always want to have water at the bottom of your rain gauge and then we'll just put that zero mark right at the base of the water. So she's going to stick that piece of tape on there and she'll turn it around and show you in just a minute. There we go. Yeah, just like that, okay? So now we are able to say at that zero mark, I know that everything above that level is new rain. And you'll be able to see how many inches of rain you picked up. Now here in Utah, we live in the desert. So most of the time when we get a rainstorm, we'll get less than an inch of rain. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, we'll have a day where we get more than an inch of rain, but most of the time it's gonna be less than an inch of rain. But you'll be able to go out and say, oh, we got half an inch of it. rain because it's halfway up to the one. Now the final piece of this is to create a little funnel on the top. And you do that by using the top of the bottle that we cut off. Now take the lid off of, we, we still have that lid on there, so take it off. You're gonna stick the top of the bottle in upside down. And if it doesn't want to stay, you can tape it in place. Most of the time it will stay in place. See how nicely Miss yeah. Jade stays in place like that? So now the water is going to collect in that funnel and pour down into the bottle. And we'll be able to get a fairly accurate measurement of how much rain we've received. Fascinating. Yeah, okay. And then so, you, could, you could add other lines with your ruler. You, you could do sure a half could. inch or you a quarter sure inch could. to really be able to get mm -hmm. a good idea of you how much, right? You absolutely could make more, as many as you want to make. And when you look at a ruler, you can see lots of little tiny oh, yeah. lines. How so tiny. You, you could have a lot of fun and get really specific with how much you're measuring. So that's how we make a rain gauge. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. I love okay, that. Okay, let's get back now to our freezing rain experiment. You pass that over to me, Thank you. our little rain gauge. Let's, thank you, Thank lab, you, lab assistant. assistant Kevin. Okay, let's measure our water temperature now. 
move my uh, phone yeah. out of the puddle. We'll do another comparison here. Here's our water that has the ice inside it. Let's see what the temperature is. Can what was it before, that? about 41? 41, uh-huh, and it'll probably be pretty close to that still. Yep, about 41.3. Yep. 41.2, 41. So it's gone down a little bit. Now our super cooled water, remember that? What was it at before? Was it at 28? 20, 29, 29, I think, yep, 29. So hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to position it so that, oh, there oh, you yeah. go. That's good. Look, we're now down to 27.8 degrees, but it's still liquid. It's still water. It hasn't turned to ice yet, but we're going to turn it to ice magically, okay? <laughs> so I've got another bowl of ice right there. This is going to act like our cold street. Okay. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is our frozen ground right here that we're going to um, see the freezing rain fall on. Now you can take that cup out of the bowl now. See how it's still liquid? That is still liquid water in there. Okay, now Miss Jade, what I want you to do is I want you to pour it. Let's try to pour it right into the center here. Okay. And see what happens. Watch very closely. This is going to be fun. Just keep pouring, 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 and do you see oh, what it's is working. forming there? Keep going, keep going, dump that in. Do you see that little mountain of ice that's being created? Oh, that is too cool, Miss Lindsay. We just instantly turned liquid water into ice in less than a Can second. See that? Isn't that cool? So that's how freezing rain works. It falls through the atmosphere into that cold layer and it hits the frozen ground, the frozen street, your frozen car that's parked outside and ice instantly starts to accumulate on it. Fascinating. Isn't that, cool? that is so cool. So that is freezing rain, something that you might not be super familiar with here in Utah because it doesn't happen very often. Every few years we'll get a freezing rain event. Um, where you get that layer of mm -hmm. ice on the roads and on the sidewalks and everywhere, and it makes traveling very dangerous. It so when you fun. see that happening, you can go, hey, mom and dad, that means some super cooled water mm -hmm. fell through the sky and instantly froze to the ground. Very neat. Yeah. I think that's, that's Okay, fantastic. we've got a few minutes left for some questions. If you've got questions about rain gauges or about freezing rain, Let's answer him now. So a question from Chase, nine years old, from okay. Meadow Elementary, wants to know, are there places where there's no rain at all? Yes, well, no rain at all, mm, that would be hard, but there are many places around the earth, those deserts, that get very little rain per year. So for example, we have one of those here in Utah, St. George gets about nine inches of rain a year, that's all. Here in Utah, we get about 16, or in Salt Lake City, I should say, we get about 16 inches of rain a year. So we are a desert that gets very little rain. In comparison, there are other places that get hundreds of inches of rain per year. So that tells you uh, the difference between a desert and a non-desert location. Now, as far as getting no rainfall, I don't know of any places on the earth that don't ever get any rain, but there are many places that get just a little bit of rain each year. 11-year-old uh, Tyler wants to know, <laughs> great question, <laughs> Why is the weather right now so weird? Why is the weather right now? Because it's spring. That's why. Spring and fall are our in-between seasons. They kind of go back and forth between winter and summer. Those two seasons are kind of battling it out. And so some days will still be very cold in the spring, and then other days will be very warm in the spring. So spring and fall tend to be our wackiest weather seasons because we're kind of going back and forth between summer-like weather and winter-like like weather and we actually have a science school lesson coming up on on seasons and why seasons happen I think that's coming up in uh, a couple of weeks I think it's maybe maybe a week and a half two weeks from now we'll be doing a seasons lesson okay another question how can it rain in one place yes. but not in another maybe even from just you know town to town along the Wasatch Front? That's a good question. The reason that that happens is because we talked about the water cycle and you get that evaporation then condensation and precipitation. Sometimes that happens in a very small 
area. So you'll get one little shower that'll pop up, maybe at your house, but at your friend's house, a couple of streets over, they don't get any rain. That's why, because we have what are called microclimates, where you can get very uh, a, a large scale weather system happening on a small scale, if that makes sense. You can get just a little tiny shower over one area and not over another. Hopefully that makes sense. And so another question that we had, this is from 11 year old Adelaide. Okay. How long does it take for a cloud to form? It depends on the day. Some days clouds can form very quickly. Other days it'll take a little bit longer. It tends to depend on how much moisture is in your atmosphere, how much water vapor you have in the air evaporated that's condensating once it gets a little bit higher and a little bit colder. Let's see what else. As far as the seasons go, mm -hmm. and we know we're going to talk about that in science yeah. school in a couple of weeks, but uh, why is it sometimes where we have maybe a longer, what feels like a longer winter or mm -hmm. a shorter spring, and what are we seeing right now? Okay, so it's actually been a very dry April so far, our driest April so far on uh, record, and our temperatures really haven't been that cold either. So this has been a fairly nice start to our spring season, this April has, but yeah, Jade is right. Some Sometimes we will have a fall that seems to last forever. We just don't get snow until almost Thanksgiving. And then other falls where we get snow in October, even before Halloween. We can even have snow on Halloween. The reason that sometimes our fall season or our spring season is really nice and other times it's not so nice is all dependent on the jet stream. The jet stream is basically a river up in the atmosphere that takes storms along it and it brings in colder air masses and warmer air masses. And so when that jet stream stays to the north in Canada, that's when you have really nice weather for spring or for fall. But when that jet stream is a little bit farther south, then you tend to get those competing air masses and you can get a colder fall or a colder spring. So it all really has to do with where the jet stream is. And so far this spring season, our jet stream has stayed a little bit farther to the north and that's why it's been a little bit drier and that's also why it's been a little bit warmer as well. And that's why I like it a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a great question and I, I would have no idea how to okay. answer. What is acid rain? This is from Allie, mm. Abby, and Jackson from South Jordan Elementary. That's a great question. Now, acid rain happens when we put pollution in the atmosphere. So you've got these pure raindrops falling through the sky. And when that air has pollution in it, it can sometimes pick up some of those pollutants into the raindrop. When those pollutants are very acidic, that's when we get acidic rain. So the rain can land on cars and over time it can ruin the paint job mm. on a car. That's because the pollutants are getting trapped within those raindrops and that's what acid rain is. How does hail form? This is from uh, Jackson from Mountain Green Middle School. Okay. Hail. Hail, we didn't talk about today. Hail is another type of precipitation. It's its own beast, and we are going to do a whole science school lesson on hail coming up as well. And we're gonna do a little science experiment to explain how hail forms. But basically, in a nutshell, I'll explain it really briefly for you. You get a little particle, maybe a piece of sand, a piece of dirt, or a little piece of pollution that ice starts accumulating on in your thunderstorm cloud. Well, in the thunderstorm, it kind of goes up and down. You've got all these different winds coming into and out of the thunderstorm. And I'm gonna go more in depth about this in a few weeks, but it takes that hailstone up and down, up and down. And as it goes up and down in the thunderstorm cloud, you get more and more ice accumulating on that little particle until it gets so big that the, uh, the all those competing winds in the thunderstorm can't hold it up in the sky anymore. Gravity takes over and pulls it down to the ground. So we'll be talking more about hail, how you get really big hailstones, all of that coming up in a future science school lesson. I think that's in a couple of weeks as well. And Sydney Mason and Jacob from Fox Hollow Elementary, they want to know if freezing rain can turn to snow. It, well, it can turn to sleet, if that makes mm. sense. So it, we talked about that different setup. So if you've got rain falling and it falls into a cold layer and it has enough time to refreeze, it'll turn into sleet or little snow pellets. But if it doesn't have time to change over, it hits as a raindrop 
instantly freezes and then there's no changing it after that. It's just ice stuck to the ground. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating. So there's some answers to some of your questions. Thank you so much for joining us today, learning about different precipitation types. Let's show you what you need for your next science school lesson if you want to do the assignment with us. You're going to need a clear plastic container about the size of a shoebox. You're going to need blue ice cubes, so you'll need to do this, you know, your, your normal fridge uh, ice isn't going to work for this because we got to color it blue. So if you've got popsicle makers or if you've got an ice cube tray, something like that, you'll want to make some blue ice cubes in that tray. You're also going to need some red food coloring and some water. We're talking about thunderstorms and how they form on Thursday Science School. We'll see you on Thursday at 9.30. Don't be tardy. Toodles. Totally worked. Yeah. yeah.